Now on Relevant Today, the story behind a story of bounce. This program is powered by Hossfinder. Special healthcare on demand. Now, um, our sister sent um, um, Anina van Nail is her name. She's from Nobib, no, Namibia um, originally, and she's living and working in um, St. Helena for the Human Rights Organization. So basically she started this action and it caught the attention of um, Peggy um, George King, which is in New York City, who was also instrumentally um, involved at the time in relation to bringing our ancestors remains back from all of the various universities throughout the U.S. which were dig dug digged up in New York City. And that action led, I think it started somewhere in 1998, the African community rose up and they protest and they demanded respect and dignity for our ancestors remains. And so Today in New York City, they have this national park, which is a memorial park of remembrance with respect and dignity for our African ancestors. Now, St. Helena struggle is a similar struggle. St. Eustatia struggle is a similar struggle. So all of these um, islands have the same correlation. And so, um, the attention which St. Helena got from the people involved, like I said earlier, Mrs. King, they decided to make a documentary. And that documentary is telling the story of the situation pertaining to our ancestors which were enslaved and been without any form of dignity and respect, has been treated as like garbage at the time. But I am grateful that we are, that we're not standing in an empty square talking about issues that don't seem to rouse the collective outrage of our country. The truth is, the overwhelming majority of Americans want us to change this national nightmare. Senator Menendez and I have been fighting on this issue not in a reactive sense since the day I got to the Senate. The story of Bones has um, been presented and released in, as a premiere at the Tribeca Festival this year, June the 11th. I was supposed to be in New York as a representative of the St. Eustatius African Burial Ground Alliance. What is so important we have started in St. Eustatius last year, in April, a protest and a struggle towards the um, archaeologists from Finland, Germany, the US, the Netherlands, which came to St. Eustatius. And they so-called discover after Barbados, the second biggest African enslaved ancestors African, our ancestors people in the Caribbean, in the region, in St. Eustatius. That burial ground is called the 18th century African plantation burial ground of our ancestors. And because of the way the organization which is in St. Eustatius, which they call the St. Eustatius Center for Archaeology and Research, which, by the way, does not even have a license to excavate in Europe, but yet could do the excavation on St. Eustatius. They docked up at the time something between um, 68, almost 70 of our ancestors' remains. We don't know exactly where those remains are. According to some information, they're supposed to be on the island somewhere 
we don't know. And what I heard lately in an island council meeting is that the same organization is actually with the so-called local government of St. Eustatius right now is busy with their psychological pressure and saying, well, you know, our ancestors remains where they are and being kept cannot be there for too long because we will have to put them back into the earth. So what they want to do right now is to do DNA research on our ancestors' remains without any um, broad community consensus agreeing to this from the African community on the island. It is in time like this, foreign countries are rushing in, taking all resources that are available, collect, select, and put them into museums located in western countries, writing their own books, and at the end, writing their version of history that comes with making a lot of profit. When you look at what is going on with St. Helena, this brought us to a point where St. Helena reached out to us, the St. Eustatius African Battleground Alliance. And from that point on, we merged together and been cooperating and working together up until today. So right now, when you look at the history of the Middle Passage merging, that um, has a relation to do with right now St. Eustatius presently being at the Tribical Festival at the same time. And I must note too that the St. Eustatius African Battleground is a um, branch coming out of the Ubuntu political party which took part in the national elections in 2017. In which country? On the island as well. All right. And in the Netherlands. All right, thank you. Yeah, um, we had um, been um, able to um, capture out of what they call the 20 um, elected district, we captured 13 of those elected dist uh, district. And because of the transition which took place in October 2010, where of St. Eustatius, Saba, and Bonaire became public entity. They are also, those two, three islands, are eligible to take part in the national elections. And so in 2017, we won on St. Eustatius 51% of the election, the electorate. With this victory, they pushed out the CDA party that was the most prominent party in St. Eustatius. Did this lead to any consequences in the investigation? Well, there, there are no consequences. Um, that's the point of concern. There are recommendations and conclusion. Conclusion is was that um, the St. Eustatius Center for Archaeology and Research dealt with the situation without considering and taking into consideration the, um, the input of the African community without actually looking at any form of international um, criteria when it comes to ethical standards. And on the other hand, they conclude that in the report which they wrote that there was gross maltreatment and dealing with our ancestors' remains, which they said and conclude, um, turning the blind eye to what was going on. Now, the local government, which need to be understood to in this case, in, I think it was the 5th of um, February 2018, the Dutch central government dissolved the local island government throw it aside and put their own appointees to deal with the island today. So there is no democracy on the island right now. As we speak, I think it was yesterday, the day before, um, Alexander van Hoffelen and Hugo de Jong, former minister of um, 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 health, are on the island. And what I heard um, them speaking about is that they will be looking at what we call cultural heritage, 
But when we look at Facebook, there's a lot of negative reaction to their visit because they spoke, instead of speaking about our ancestors and the situation related to our ancestors, they mainly put emphasis on the salute of St. Eustatius at the time, saluting or bringing out a salute to the American flag. St. Eustatius is and was a transit port for where our ancestors were taken against their will and was brought throughout the Americas. St. Eustatius was a transit port for the continuation and the distribution of our enslaved ancestors. So when one speak about the saluting of the American flag, it isn't we African had anything to do with an American flag. We were taken against our will at that point in time and being made slaves throughout the Americas. You cannot have healing unless the crime, which has been acknowledged by the United Nations, which has been inflicted on our ancestors, the African people, has been pronounced and stated by the UN as a crime against humanity. <laughs>